Hey guys, it's Dan and welcome back to Unified Gaming. Now have you ever faced a stamina foe who was literally unkillable, yet just a moment later they could turn around and one shot you? Or perhaps you've wondered how do I create a character that is also able to be tanky and hit hard yet can somehow sustain? Or maybe you've just want a character that could do it all, work in Cyrodiil, Battlegrounds and even duels? Well rest assured, in this video we're going to answer those questions and many more as we look at a tried and tested method that I personally use to create all of my stamina PvP characters for the Elder Scrolls Online. And if you're a Magicka user, don't panic, I've got you covered as there's a video already on the channel so do check it out. But before we jump in, if you want to see more ESO content then remember to subscribe, leave a like and comment and why not consider sharing it with somebody else, it will help them out and it will help the channel. And with introductions out of the way, we're going to jump straight in. Now in order to understand this method, you do need to understand how I build my characters, okay? Now I build my characters in three parts, damage, defense and sustain. And I would highly recommend that you do the same, okay? It's generally the best way of building in all honesty. And this method guarantees you to do that. Now to help you out, I've actually gone through and I've grouped all of the sets into the main purpose, whether that's damage, sustain or defense. And I've tried to exclude proc sets because they don't really help you become a better player. The way in which I build assumes that you will have full impenetrable as it's generally the best trait in PvP currently. And if you want to go in medium armor, then you could run up to three well fitted, okay? And there's a key to make it really easy to follow. All of the green coloured sets are going to be easy to obtain. You could literally go out and buy them from day one. The yellow ones are a little trickier in all honesty. A dungeon maybe or just a little bit expensive. And those red ones guys, they are rather expensive. They come from hard dungeons or you might need a master crafter. But they are really really good sets. And then the blue ones, obviously they're your monster sets, okay? Any set that's marked with a H in brackets is obviously a heavy armor set, and anything marked with an M is a medium armor set. I've also put in some crafted sets, so seeds for crafted sets. Now I'd suggest that you pay close attention to the next section as we will explore really good sets for PvP, followed by a demonstration of how to make stamina PvP builds with this tried and tested method. And if you do agree or disagree with the set choices that I've put in there, leave a comment, it's always great to start a discussion those defensive set we have our green sets which are easy to get the first one is Alessian's Order it's a heavy armor set it's loads of passive healing with its health recovery and the more armor you stack the more health recovery you get it's a really good set we then have impregnable armor it's a light medium and heavy set it comes in all weights this gives you loads and loads of crits which means all of those big hits are a lot smaller especially in battlegrounds I then added Coward's Gear, this is a really good set, it's medium armour, it makes you tanky when you sprint and move around, it gives you a bit of movement speed, it's really good for line of sight play when you run around rocks and towers and that kind of playstyle. We then have Fortified Brass, it gives you a little bit of health and loads of armour, so nothing wrong with that. We then got Orgnan Scales, this is another crafted set, it's a HP regen set and it pairs really well with Troll King, just like Alessian's Order. Then those yellow sets, we have Mark of the Prior. Mark of the Pride is a phenomenal set, it's a heavy armor set, it's crazy defense, it beats Brass by quite a margin when you're below 70% health. And what's more, the lower health you get, the more and more armor you get, it's really good. It means people struggle to execute you. Our second yellow set is Plague Doctor. Simply put, it's loads of health, so you're hard to burst down. Our red sets are somewhat difficult to get, we've got Armor Master, it's a crafted set. Loads of armor if you use an armor skill, so Shuffle, Immovable or the Light Armor Shield. Shuffle or immovable for us. You can back bar this and transfer the buff to the front bar. I do this on my stamina warden build, so definitely worth checking that out. Our next set is Leech and Plate. It's a heavy armor set, and when you take damage, we put poison under the enemy. The damage they take, the healing we get. It's really simple, but loads and loads of heals. Our last red set is Ancient Dragon Guard. This is kind of a hybrid between damage and defense. It's basically damage when you want it, and defense when you need it, so it's a really good set. As for those monster sets, we have Bloodspawn. It's probably the best defensive set in the game. As for those monster sets, we have Bloodspawn. Bloodspawn, in all honesty, is the best set. It gives you resistance, it gives you stamina regen and ultimate generation. It's really, really strong, so definitely run this if you're unsure what to run. As for our second set, we have Mighty Chudan. This gives us one line of armor, which is always nice. But the main benefit from this set is that we get our resolve passives, which means we get our armor buffs, so we get a free skill slot. If you need a skill slot, run Chudan. We then have Troll King, which is just absolutely broken. It's crazy HP regen for you and your allies, not just yourself. There's no cooldown, there's no target cap, so it's really, really strong. As for those damage sets, guys, our first green set is Hunting's Rage. It's a crafted set. It's a nice amount of damage, and it's crit chance. It's a really good stable set there. Our next set is Griffins. It's a medium armor set. It gives us minor force, so 10% more crit damage, and minor expedition, so we move faster. If we do damage, it's really good at Nightblade, really good at Templar. Christopher ESO really swears by this, so definitely worth checking it out. 
Those yellow sets are a little trickier to get in all honesty, but they are really good. We have Truth, it's a heavy armor set. Basically, when we set people off balance, we get loads of damage. So if you use Dizzy and Swing, run this set. Within our 7th Legion, it's another heavy armor set. When you use an armor ability, so like the Ice Fortress on the Warden, it gives you extra damage. It doesn't work with the Nightblade passive armor thing, so just be aware of that, okay? We then have Deadly Strikes, it's a medium armor set. And if you want a dot build, this is the set for you. It's really good on Stam DK or Stam Sword. Our next set is Hulk and Draga. This gives us loads and loads of Stam. It's another medium armor set. It's kind of like Alfeek, but stamina version. More stamina, more damage, so it's a win-win. We then have Shieldbreaker, it's another medium armor set. It's a flat damage percent boost at all times, and what's more, if the target's got a shield on, you do even more damage, so nothing wrong with that. We then have Spriggan's Thorns, another medium armor set. Gives us loads of penetration, means more damage gets through, we hit harder, really simple. As for our red sets, these are a little bit tricky to get, but they're expensive and so on. We have Fury, this is a heavy armor set. The more damage we take, the more damage we do. It's really good for that kind of turn and burn playstyle. It can be hard in battlegrounds, though, so do factor that in. Our next red set is Essence Thief. This is a really underrated set because it's a percentage damage boost, healing, and sustain. It's rather bonkers in one set. Our next medium set is Poisonous Serpent. It's a great build for dot builds or just night blades or people in melee range. Sniker uses this a lot. Our next set is the Twice Spawn Star. This gives us two Munderstones so we can run things like the Warrior and the Lover for loads of damage. Or you could just change it up and have more sustain or more defense. But it's a really good set, it's kind of a jack of all trades set there. We then have Ancient Dragon Guard once more. It offers that damage kind of defense set in one, you know, damage when you want it, defense when you need it, so a really good set there. And then the last one is New Moon Acolyte. This is just phenomenal. The damage is very similar to Fury at all times though, but your skills do cost more. So I would recommend running this set on your front bar in all honesty, and then have like a bow or something on the back bar that's different, like a Potentes. As for those monster sets, we have Balorg. It's high burst when you use an ultimate. It's really good in organized groups, but it's a bit lackluster on things like Battlegrounds if you're not organized. We then have Veladreth, which is a proc set. It hits really hard. It's great on a Nightblade or if you're in melee a lot, but that's about it. I'd honestly go for Bloodsmoor personally. Now for those sustain sets, of which there's not many actually, that's because it's very easy to pick up sustain on a stamina character through glyphs, food, and so on. And on top of that, the skills are generally cheaper than Magicka, so that's why there's less options here. As for the green sets, we have Shacklebreaker. It's a crafter set that's underrated. If you use this, you could run an extra regen glyph on top and you'll be absolutely fine. Then our yellow sets include Bone Pirates and Medium Armor set. It's max stam, it's stam regen, but you must have a drink buff, so things like Dubious Cameroon Throne, Pack Lead of Broth, or Spring Loaded Infusion work really well. We then have a heavy armor set, which is Black Rose. Now this basically gives you more bang for your buck from the constitution passive. So when you take damage, you get more sustain. It's really good. As for those red sets, we have Trappings. It's a medium armor set. It's very similar to Warlock. Basically loads of stamina when you need it. You can back bar this and just get the stamina as you need it and then go to the front bar. So a really good set for battlegrounds. We then have Eternal Hunt. It gives us two lines of region and it helps us escape after rolling. It's definitely good for Nightblades. And there's only one monster set. This set gives us our main attribute back and our off attribute back when we deal critical damage, so it's not a bad set. Now with all of those sets covered guys and explored, we're going to actually look at how do you make your character and it's really really simple thanks to the way in which I've grouped all of the sets for you, so you do need to pay close attention as I'd hate for you to get it wrong. When you make your build you need to decide to join the medium armor passives or the heavy armor passives and if so you pick the right set combination. If you're after the medium passives, you simply pick two medium armor sets and that's it. Alternatively, you could pick one heavy armor set and one medium armor set, but the heavy armor set, and I can't stress this enough, has to be jewelry and weapons, or no more than two body pieces. If you go with two body pieces and then jewelry or weapons, you then need to have two medium monster pieces. If you're a bit unsure about that, check out the Stamina Warden build, Nature's Guardian, on the channel which does exactly this. If you want to have a heavy armor build, then it's really simple, you just commit. You have 7 heavy, and that's it. Now with all of that out of the way, to actually build is really really simple. You need to know what passives you want, and then you literally pick from the boxes. One from each box, it's as simple as that, okay? The Reality Stamina Dragonite build, which is on the channel, uses this format. He wanted the medium armor passives, so he chose sets that gave him medium armor passives, or he went with a crafted set. He runs Bloodspawn as a defensive set, Acolytes as a damage set, and Bone Pirate as the sustain set. Bone Pirate is medium, Acolyte can be crafted, 
so he went with medium for that, and Bloodsworn is obviously at its weight you want. This means he has the medium armor passives absolutely ticked off, and then to fine tune the build, he has the glyphs and the Mundestone to just allow him to tweak it, make it personal for him, and he does really, really well on it as you saw in the footage. For me, if you treat the glyphs and the Mundestone with this approach as kind of like a pseudo set, a way in which to fix or just refine the build to make it personal to you, you will always have something that will work for you in Battlegrounds and in Cyrodiil, and it's how I build. I can't stress it enough, guys. There's also a second way in which you can use this format to make a very specialised build, such as my standard, Nature's Guardian. There's a build on the channel. This uses Bloodspawn, defensive set, Armor Master, another defensive set, and Fury, my damage set. Now you're probably thinking, Dan, this is nonsense. You have no sustain. What? You've just said you need sustain. What? It's actually really simple. Your Glyphs and your Mundestone fix it. Your Glyphs and your Mundestone are the easiest ways to pick up damage or sustain. So if you build a very specialised build, you can sacrifice the damage or the sustain and then use the Glyphs to fix it. So in this I went for loads of defence and a bit of damage through Fury and to fix the sustain I then chucked on some Glyphs and a Mundestone and I'm good to go. This build is designed to be tanky, it's a specialised build. It hits really hard as well, which is what I designed it to do. I then added on some sustained glyphs as you see, and the build works. It's really simple. Another example of this is just your standard meta stamina build, and this uses a specialised approach. Most meta builds use Fury, New Moon and Bloodsworn. Damage set, damage set and defensive set. And you go in a wall, there's no sustain there, and you're right. You simply pick it up with your glyphs and your Mundestone, and you're good to go. It's a really easy way to build. If you build in this way, you will have a set for each area and then you can tune it with the glyphs and the Mundestones. Or you have two sets from one box like we saw with those specialised builds, and again you tune it with the glyphs and the Mundestone. And your build will work. It's how I build, it's how I build all of my characters, and I would highly recommend you do the same. Now I can guarantee that if you follow this method properly, your build will work really well. It might not necessarily be the best in slot, but there will be so little difference between the best in slot build and yours that it's not worth the stress or the hassle. And instead, I would recommend that you focus on your class and that you play in the character and getting used to it and getting confident. That's the important message from this video. Your build could be absolutely perfect. You could follow the ones on my channel, which are min-maxed down to the T. But ultimately, you have to play it, not me. So rather than stressing about the right gear, the right traits, make a build in the format that I've shown in this video, or follow the ones on the channel, and then learn the class, learn the build, the playstyle, and I can guarantee you that you'll do much better this way. It will take some time you will get it wrong, you will die. But that's part of PvP, that's the fun. I went through it, I died loads, everybody on YouTube went through it, they died loads, they just don't show it. It's kind of like the big elephant in the room. People die, you improve from dying. So see dev as a way to improve, don't be hesitant of it. Now if you're still here, I'd like to say a huge thank you for staying around this long, and perhaps you enjoyed it, perhaps you liked it. Maybe you know somebody else you would like or benefit from this video, then why not share it with them? While it will help them out, it will also help out the channel. And remember that if you do want to see more ESO content, then subscribe and give the video a like or leave a comment. And before I forget, I'd like to give a massive shout out to our glorious Patreon, Captain TJ, who is literally single-handedly helping the channel. Maybe you could help him too and help the channel by becoming a Patreon. There's a link in the description. And with that said guys, I'll catch you in the next one. So thanks for watching, take care, and bye!